considering staying in Port Huron? Well, that is something to think about. Alan has been very encouraging. Why shouldn't I be after all you've been through? If I could attend medical school, it would be a dream come true. Well, I wouldn't get your hopes up. Why not? Well, um, it, it may be too late for him to uh, put in his application. Not necessarily. I'm going to talk to the dean of the medical school. I think I can use my influence to get you in. I don't know if you realize this, but in just a few minutes' time, you have turned my entire life around. Well, you should feel encouraged. You know, the dean and I were roommates at medical school, so uh, no harm in asking him, is there? No, I suppose not, but it doesn't guarantee that he will still get into medical school. No, I understand that. But I am very grateful to you both. I never would have dreamed that people could be so kind to me. Listen, you've got a lot of people behind you, Grant. And just having you and Monica behind me is more than enough. It'll help me deal with the possibility that I might not succeed. You better start thinking positively, though. <laughs> I'll try. And now I, uh, I better be on my way. I've taken up enough of your time as it is. I will call you as soon as I speak to the dean, all right? Alan, I could, uh, I could never thank you properly. You may not be thanking me at all when you're slaving over those medical textbooks. <laughs> we'll see about that. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Monica. Anytime you want to start in on me, Monica, just go for it. I don't know where to start. I am flabbergasted. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. There's no harm in helping him. Harm? Harm? Do you know what trouble you can cause by having him stay in this town? I felt sorry for him. What else could I do? You could have kept your mouth shut. I don't really think that would be fair. Fair? What do you mean by fair? This family went out of its way to make a home for an imposter. The least we can do is just be a little bit kind to the real Grant Putnam. Excuse me, uh, when did you develop a conscience? You're only thinking about yourself, Mom. I am not. I am thinking about the family, especially Celia. Look, it's obvious that she's trying to help him as well. Certainly she is, but not by asking him to stay in Port Charles. Listen, Monica, I'm going to put in a few good words. There's no guarantee he's going to be accepted in medical school anyway. What if he is? We'll handle it. Handle it? Oh, we'll handle it. Uh, how is Celia going to handle it, my friend? How is she going to handle having two men that look exactly the same, one being a lover, the other being a husband, running around the same town? It'll be a little awkward. Awkward? Oh, well, I would say it would be more than awkward. I would say it would be unbearable. I'm sorry, Monica. I still think I did the right thing. Well, that's just dandy, Alan. While you're sitting there so smug, you might consider that you have caused more trouble for Grant and Celia than you could possibly imagine. Hello, Celia. Grant? Is something wrong? No, I just, I didn't expect to see you still here. <laughs> well, Alan and Monica and I started talking. Really? Yeah, they're lovely people. Yes, they are. Are, are you sure that everything is all right? Yes, I just needed to talk to Monica about something. Well, you seem a little bit upset. No, I'm not, not at all. All right. I, uh, I just have something in the oven down at the gatehouse, and I needed to talk to Monica, and then I have to get back there before the timer goes off. Well, I won't keep you then. Grant? This is the last time I'm going to see you. Uh, not necessarily. But you said you were leaving. Well, I may not be. But, Grant, this morning you said... I know. But circumstances have changed, Celia, and I think for the better. What? I may be attending medical school here in Fort Charles. What? You know I always wanted to be a doctor. Yes, and I'm very happy for you. Well, you're just... helping me to remember the past has given me a, a renewed faith in the future. Though I, uh, I suppose you'd rather I didn't go to school here, wouldn't you? Grant, please understand. I know that you have to get your life together, that you have to pick up the pieces. But, but why do you have to do it here? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's pride. You see, if I, 
If I don't get in this way, none of my friends back in New York will be any the wiser. And even if I do get into school, I think it will be easier for me to make a go of it here where I have someone like Alan to help me over the rough spots. Alan? Yes. He's the one encouraging me to attend medical school in Port Charles. Well, no, I'd, I'd better let you go. You've got that, uh, that supper to attend to, remember? understand how you could go along with it. Don't look at me. Celia, you had to be there to understand what the man is going through. Well, did you stop for even one minute to think what I would go through if he stays? I did. You were as sympathetic to him as I was, Monica. Well, yes, to his studying medicine, but not studying here. I felt sorry for him, that's all. Oh, fine. But couldn't you have encouraged him to study medicine anywhere, anywhere but Port Charles? I can't help him anywhere else except well, in Port Charles. Why would you want to help him? You don't even know him. Look, I'm putting in a few good words for him. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be accepted here in medical school anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. That's just what I needed, another problem to solve. What was the point in inviting him to stay in Port Charles in the first place? The man has as much right to live here as you do, Celia. He has no right in the world to be here, and you know it. He was locked up against his will for eight years. I don't think anybody has the right to tell him where he can or cannot live anymore. That's just my point. There is a big, wide world out there, and he... What's the point? What's your problem? I want to talk to you, Alan Quartermain. 